the Japanese, in terms of potting, were flawless. And yet they lost. Imagine missing one ball in 13 racks and losing the set. That's the quote here. Yes, and we've had several matches here, Raleigh, where Hungry wins the like. players have missed countless balls and still ended up winning. Yeah, one of those matches actually was Hungary's run. last match. Hungary's you know, they're going to look to uh, keep this a little tighter and redeem themselves from a pretty scrappy limp over the finish line last time. So breaking off is Vilmos Valdez. That was a good break as well. Key ball's been kicked up table and all day really. We've not seen many shots, open shots on the break. It's just been one of them days. Maybe we're going to see a push. I was down in the arena for the last match for about 20 minutes. Boy, it is warm in there. So we've got to take that into consideration a little bit for these for these pool players. It's uncomfortable, the grind in a way. Yeah, extenuating circumstances, I think they call it. This is when you are playing safe and never really a good thing. <clears throat> I always felt like it was going to be awkward to try and land on the one ball. Well, played it with right and spin, taking a chance, but it's gone wrong, so it's going to be a safety shot. And this looks a, Extension, a please. tricky manoeuvre he's attempting. Yes, and in terms of his stature, he's got height on his side, Dimitri Jungo. Yeah, he kicked it the right way. Going off two rails. And three balls in the middle of the table. You always had a chance of something coming from it. Ronald's going to kick two rails in behind it, separate the balls. He's actually going into the ball first, so... One more thing, good shot. Prospects of European pool, Oliver Shonnocky, semi-finalist in the World Championship last year. Actually came within two racks of making the final. Bowed out 11-9 to Omar Al Shaheen, but not before beating the likes of Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, Wojciech Chefcik, and his best win in the last 16, 11-5 over Shane Van Boning. <clears throat> I 
Ich bin jetzt echt selber stoppen. Ja. Merci, Don. Using the eight ball. And holding the cue ball in behind that green six. We've seen him play in this tournament particularly a lot over the years, and I can honestly say I've never seen him play any better than he did in the previous round call. Yeah, I would go along with that, Phil. I think maybe just the fact that he's been playing in more pool tournaments, getting a bit more experience under his belt has helped. Ilmos is on a spotted bother. Wait. Hitting this two is easy, but often when you're kicking at the balls, you kind of you have a bit of an idea where they're trying to leave them and what good things may come from kicking a certain way. This looks awkward. Delighted with the outcome. Yeah, in the last 18 months or so, Sean Noki has emerged as the, the leading player from Hungary, but do not underestimate Foldesh. He's full of experience and he's had a good career. What a way to start this first match. Just seven or eight defensive shots in a row played. Kind of stopping either team from getting a real run here. Might be might be good for Hungary since they've been dealing with a pretty scrappy tournament so far. Okay, it's a little bit of a chance for Ronald. Just needs good contact on this purple five. If it can draw into the seven, that would be delightful. He tried, I think. Maybe he tried to go into the five, I'm not really sure, but it's gone wrong anyway. That's the main thing. It up. Hit that kick shot all wrong, didn't it? And this is what's give Hungary a chance. And this is oh, this is this is a proper chance now. Doesn't want to land straight though. If the seven goes past the nine, it's okay. Well, you can see he's got a bit of angle. Well, it must go past the nine, so this is fine. Would have liked to have been a little bit further down the table, though. That's why he was scared of the nine. These four inch pockets. You've got to be a little bit more accurate now, boys. The game is changing. Oh, I was afraid of that happening. That will be a real dagger to Bill Moshe's confidence. Although he's got a little bit of a nine ball in the way, but it shouldn't be a problem for Ronald. Great shot.
Dimitri said great shot as the cue ball were tracking up table but when he walked round to wait for the cue ball to stop I think he was like hold on a minute what's going on here this could go behind the nine well the first part of it was pretty great though Carla went right in that hole cue ball flying around well I mean the seven was over the pocket well come on I've missed that I've missed that before a lot of times Been a strange rack this one, hasn't it? Both teams feel, will probably feel they've both got a good chance of winning this match. So early, nerves early on. Oh, oh. this is a real repeat of our Hungary versus Czech Republic match, where it was just nervy and missy the whole time. In the previous round, he was reliable, Ronald Regley. That was unreliable. Three must be pots. And the opening rack shall knock you, slots it home. And this Oliver wants more. More rack wins for Hungary. Austria on the back foot straight away. That's one that should have gone to them. Although you could make the argument that had Vilmos Foldes not missed the seven ball by overcutting, then Hungary would have won it a little cleaner. So we've talked about Sean Nocky getting to the semi-finals of the World Championship last year. Vilmos Foldes did that in 2007. He lost out to the eventual winner, a player we know well, Carl. Daryl Peach. If you're watching, Daryl, hope you're well. The man from Blackpool, England's World Nine Ball champion 15 years ago. And there's a great story, actually, about that event because it was played in Manila in the Philippines in a place called the Araneta Coliseum. And boxing fans will know that was the venue for the thriller in Manila, Joe Frazier and the great Muhammad Ali. Well, these fans... Might feel as though they've 15 right rounds today, given the heat to break in this venue. Right but of course, with Great Britain coming up against South Africa, no one's going home. No, I think overall, with the weather that we've had, you know, on pool, let's be honest, we're starting at the bottom, we're trying to grow the sport. That's room of taking an interest, and that's what the game needs. I think overall you can't fault the people that have come out to watch these matches. Decent pot. A bit of an angle here. So he's got two options. He's got a decent angle indeed. He can force this in. Needed it off the rail a little bit more though. That's that's about a foot and a half short. The impression these pockets are visibly tightening up. Call that one to me was in all day, and yet it only just flopped into the pocket. We see a lot of people out in the audience, shiny as the day is long, it is hot and humid in here and not just because of that table what do you think that does to the roll of the balls a little a little hot and humid Carl I think it's gonna speed it up the TV table is always gonna play quicker than any other table because it's got massive table lighting 
above it so that's bounding heat down and then obviously with the weather and all that going on I think you can see it's playing quick can't you there's that extra roll on it He's got quite an ungainly stance, Oliver Sholnocki, but he's one of those players who, while he's not high on style points, he's very high on effectiveness. There you go, 2 0. Foldash and Sholnocki, Hungary for success. Now, if you had asked me who I thought was going to run away with this match before we played, I would have sworn it would be Switzerland. They were rock solid against Japan, taking down Nayuki Oi. They were one of the only upsets from an unseeded team to a seeded team in the entire tournament. And yet here they are, 2-0 down against Hungary. Yeah, Rommel regularly missed the nine ball in the opening rack, didn't he? And it, this could so easily be Switzerland 2-0. Two, two when you miss them balls and them chances, a large percent of the time you're going to get punished. And now they're in a little early battle as the trail. 2-0. There's Dimitri Jungo. I actually uh, was mentioning the World Juniors champions in the last match that I commentated, and somebody said I left someone off, and the person I left off the list, Dimitri Jungo. He won it right in the year 2000. To He's one of right six now. World Juniors champions still in the tournament here. Although one will be knocked out tonight because the other one, Vilmos Voldis. Yes, Jungo won that World Junior in the beautiful city of Quebec, Canada. But from a Hungarian perspective, nothing too beautiful about the, the set out of the balls after that break. Could have been worse though, Col. Could have been a lot worse. Yeah, he's got a pot on this one ball. I'm kind of sat behind it in the comms box, so I can see he can get through to the eight, uh, past the eight rather. Spot this one. And this rack is all about this shot. It's going to sneak behind the six. It's a little unlucky. It really is. I don't know if he can get the jump cue out and jump over the six. It's awful close. Now, folks might think, well, OK, he snooked himself there because he overhit the cue ball. That wasn't the case. He actually caught the one too thin, even though it went in. One into the heart of the pocket. Position on the two would have been obtained. Extension, please. Now, a quick question about jump shots here, Carl. What is the minimum distance that you need between an object ball and a cue ball to jump the cue ball over? 11 millimeters. Wow. No, I'm just joking. That was a complete joke. Get your ruler joke. out. No, that is a Take complete Take it to the bank, joke. folks. 11 millimeters. <laughs> Carl, boys. No, that is a complete joke. Um... Oh, oh, wow. Kicked it in, Folders. There we go, Vilmos. That'll give a little confidence back to him. And now they'll look to be in a great spot to clear this rack and go 3-0 up on Switzerland. Who would have known? Yeah, on a serious note, I don't actually know if there is an exact measurement. I think, me personally, I would kind of get a feel of... The shot when I was was there, I would think, oh, it's a little bit too close, or my instinct would say, oh, I can get over this ball. So I don't know, Rolly. I just don't know. I have it on good authority. It is 11 millimeters. A professional player that I know told me that. He's landed a little bit in between here. He would have loved the cue ball to stop a little sooner or carry on rolling. 
as Phil has already alluded to. Shall not. He's got a bit of an unusual stance and looks a bit awkward on the queue, but he is very consistent and always seems to get the job done. If he does well here, Sean Nokian has a good European Open and or US Open. Not beyond the bounds of possibility, the Moscow and he can't good back in. And I think he's got the kind of temperament to suit that. Nothing seems to bother him too much. He's unflappable. There you go, solid as a rock down on the shot, although it was quite an elementary pot on the... Hungary doing really well in the World Cup of Pool. It is the final night of the last 16. By the end of the session, we will know the quarter-final lineup. Hungary looking to provide the quarter-final opposition for the USA. And in that regard, it's going according to plan. Oliver Sholnocki breaks off in rack four. They lead 3-0. The dreaded 
Random ball has kissed the cue ball in. He did lose the cue ball a little bit. Start the clock. We'll have another look at this, see if it was going near the centre. It was tracking towards it, it was going very close, so... It may have gone in anyway, even without that ball hitting it in the pocket. You've got to like the spread of these balls, haven't you? Just look at them. Any angle on this red three ball, after potting this ball, he's going to be fine. So this is the pot success rate so far in this match. Clearly Hungary far superior. So what about the tournament as a whole? Well, look at that. Even now, Switzerland are slightly better. That's because they were faultless first time out. They need to duplicate that kind of form, Carl. The game of nine ball is all about angles. Whenever you've got an angle, these top players can manipulate it and do something. And Regley's got very little ace. So he's going to have to pull off a good one. May go forward with left spin. Oh, and he has pulled out a good one. That's not bad. After that first Extension foul, first. Team Hungary is on one foul. And they are no strangers to fouls. They got three fouled in their game against the Czech Republic. If you make three consecutive fouls, that's an instant loss of game. And it, um, I feel like it almost never happens in the professionals. But Vilmos was on the receiving side of it just one match ago. Oh, that's a foul that will stick in the crawl. This is disappointing from the Swiss pair. It really is. What a performance they put in in round one. And they've had chances. That is the second rack they've completely thrown away in this match. If they're one ball for them, racks 2-1 up. This is a more than useful pairing. And Hungary stand on the cusp of 4-0. Centre cut Hungary with that nine ball from Vilmos Valdez. And now Hungary more than halfway to victory. It's partially because they played some nice ball. That's undeniable, but also their own worst enemy, Switzerland. And of course, Rolly, after this evening, the matches go to a race to nine, so you've got the opportunity, after a slow start, to get back into things. But in these races to seven, if you start making mistakes early, it becomes something of a mountain to climb. That's right. And also, these short races can provide a little bit of cover for teams that maybe aren't the best team at the table. So it's that uh, when the races go to longer games, like 9 and finally 11, the truest best team is going to win that match. <laughs> Here's a question for you, Carl. What's the, the lengthiest match you've ever been involved in? Presumably for a, a few pounds. The lengthiest match. Ooh, good question. Thank you, Rack Five. Hungry to break. You Leading can come back to us a little later. Think about it.
Well, this is a good break. And just look at the split. To answer your question, Phil. I played Oscar Dominguez. Race to 17. Race to three sets. Over two days. Oscar Dominguez, senior or junior? Junior. Did we ever see any Dominguez and Dominguez doubles matches? We've seen some uh, some pretty some brother sister ones at the World Cup. We had Ocean and Ocean. Well, in the Snooker World Cup a few years back, we had a husband and wife play. What? For Norway, Kurt Mafflin and his wife Anita. Wow, I can imagine that could end a relationship pretty quick. Uh -huh. Cue ball, he's perfect. Just run up the table, play for the eight in the side. Once they get high on the eight, yeah, that's perfect as well. That's going to make life easier for Oliver. And you can just see the Swiss team in the background ruining every decision they made. This should be a much closer match. They might even be ahead. Extension code. Even the most ardent fan of Hungary could not dispute this. It's a flattering 5-0 scoreline. Look at the first rack. Ronald Regley missed the nine ball. Look at the fourth rack. An unnecessary scratch from Dimitri Jungo. Nevertheless, how could you possibly argue that Hungary didn't deserve some form of lead? Maybe not quite as brutal as this. They're two racks away from victory. And sometimes you talk about the scoreline not really reflecting the appropriate levels of the players or not even reflecting the real tone of the game. But Hungary is two games away from the only other whitewash we will have seen in this tournament, and it does not feel like a whitewash kind of game. I'm with you there, Ollie, definitely. Of course, the, the whitewash we saw in the first round involved Great Britain B, Chris Melling and Imran Majid, who were breathtakingly good against Great Britain A, Jason Shaw and Anderson. The latter did not get right, to six. see a single pot. I'm going to break. And Great Being Britain five, B, right. now just Great Britain, will be featuring in our next match against South Africa. <clears throat> The 
Looks like it's going to be a dry one. And when you're 5-0 down and you need something to happen, the balls have come out sticky. Extension, please. Doesn't want the five to go in. Purposely played the cue ball there. Executed. Yeah, I guess if there is a nice thing about the tight pockets, it's that when you're playing a shot like that, you can be pretty sure that the combo is not going to go in. Because even when you're trying your hardest, it, it almost never goes. Extension pole. Yes, those tight pockets also help when it's marginal whether you're going to scratch or not. So they do have ancillary benefits. five that they pushed over the pocket may come in handy now is he going to play the one onto the five he did and he tried to break out the two balls and it's going from bad to worse from the boys from Switzerland Well, maybe there's a gap there, Phil. He's having a good look. <clears throat> the gap did exist. mammoth task to come back from 5-0 we've not really seen this in this year's event but they've got to try and keep Hungary off six for as long as possible cue ball doesn't need to hit the eight okay it's glanced it I think he can still chop this in yeah cue ball's going to be going three rails should be able to avoid the nine. He needs to avoid the nine. Yeah. 
I know, Cole, you're a uh, big advocate, as am I, of the, the winner breaks format. And the great thing about winner breaks is that even when you're 5 0 behind, there's still realistic hope. Get this rack on the board and then go to work. Start to buzz. Much more like it. Before that, the thought that went through everyone's mind, what a difference a day made for Switzerland. We didn't break it. A single rack is on the ledger for Switzerland. Somewhat belatedly, they've left the arena, but now are returning. So the winner of this match, still, it looks very likely it will be Hungary. The number 10 seeds will go forward to play the USA in one of the quarterfinals in the bottom half of the draw. The other quarterfinal in the bottom half is in place. It's Finland against number six seeds, Singapore. Seven. Switzerland to break, trailing by five racks to one.
where's the cue ball? It needs to stop. That's okay. They can pop this three ball. They've got an angle. Yeah. All depends on if the, the cue ball after potting this three runs past the six or is it running into the six? It's going to run past it. It's okay. Something tells me it's running towards it. Done. Yeah, good part and well held with the cue ball. That will make him feel better. Yeah, there's a brave shot for Ronald to take on, knowing that if he's just a centimeter off. It's another ball in hand, and with so many balls sunk on the break, that's certain death. So it just goes to show he's a guy who can make the shot when it counts. The game of nine ball seems so unfair, where you can pocket every single ball except for one, and the opponents win. I don't know. Extension. Extension, please. Yeah, that's what can make it very exciting, though. Especially, you don't get good on that nine ball and you feel like it's do or die. He's under hit this. He's under hit this. He's actually played the wrong shot. I think he should have floated below the nine. And play the eight up into the top pocket. Ronald can play a good safety though. Extension. Extension, please. Oliver Shulnoki, well capable of slotting home the big shot. Young man, still with nerve, well intact. Just about okay, just about it, wiped its feet. And decided to fall. Well, I thought about it. It really did. This for Hungary to get on the hill. 6 1. Who would have predicted this? Oh, he's overdone it. Lifeline for Switzerland. You know, we saw Oliver yeah, make the shot. big shot under pressure. He's yeah, young. He hasn't had a lot of those moments where he missed the big shot under pressure. But Vilmos, he's got some scar tissue. You imagine some of that got in the way for that shot. What a bonus for Switzerland. Ronald Regley missed the nine ball in the first rack. Hungary went on to lead 5-0. Now, though, it's 5-2. And for Switzerland, that is an increasingly manageable deficit. Faldesch must be feeling not too clever right now. They were one ball away from being on the hill, were Hungary. And this is the ball that went astray. Always into that far jaw. Yeah. I think Ronnie uh, made a good point, though, don't you, Carl, about the fact that as you get older, the nerve does tend to fray. Yeah, I was just going to ask you guys about that. What do you think is the, the uh, ideal age for a pool player? I mean, we know the absolute killer filler 
is like 24, 23. But you know, you got players who are still really good. Niels Feyen, for example. What's what's the age? The ideal age. Carl, you're what? 25, 26. Yeah, I'll take that, Rolly. Thank you. Love you. What is the ideal age? I think the only thing I would say is the modern game seems to rack eight. have produced Switzerland to break. Trailing by five racks to younger two. world champions and US Open champions. If you look at, let's say, Joshua Filler, Fedor Gorst. Eklund Catch is still young. This break off, by the way, what a pulverizing break that was. Just four balls remain on the table. Well, that must be the record this week. Five on the snap. Note of caution, Alex Pagulain famously potted six balls on a break off over in the States and didn't win the rack. Well, he also didn't win the rack when Canada played against the USA in the first round, so it doesn't as much matter how you start as it matters how you finish. And that's an interesting stat because Switzerland has only broken twice and they had a three and a five. They have the highest average number of balls on a break. I bet you though that we'll see all tournament, maybe all year, four. Yeah, I'd love to see how many racks have been won off the break, so a break and run after a team has missed a nine ball. It's like in baseball when a, a fielder makes a great play and almost invariably, no science behind it. They come up in the next inning and thwack a home run. How about that for a break off? Five balls in. It left them little to do. And now, at 5-3 down, Switzerland are starting to entertain the possibility of what would be the biggest fight back in the tournament so far. Suddenly, Hungary starting to feel a little hot under the collar. That was the break off. Balls flying in at all angles. Carl, that rack compounded the mistake made by Foldash by missing the nine ball in rack seven. Yeah, it's a fun early because there were five one up, feeling good. Bill Moss misses the nine. Now it's five three. And he's going to be sat in the chair thinking, well, should have been six one up here. So it's a funny old thing, pressure, how it swings back and forth. Momentum. And Right, nine. You can go to break. Switzerland to break. Trailing by five racks to three. How many balls can he put off the break now? Five's the record. I hope he gets at least four to maintain that average. Look at this, Phil. Look at this. The comeback is coming. Another three balls potted. Man, Switzerland is having an amazing break. If only they could get the rest of their game to match their break, they would be on fire. But it looks like they're coming back pretty strong here. Well, the remaining balls could hardly be more agreeable from their viewpoint. Now, I don't know if this is just because I know what has happened in the in the past couple games, but it looks to me like the Swiss players have a completely different body language. You know, they 
they're walking with confidence. They're kind of looking at each other more. I don't know, it just feels like they know they're on a run here, and they might just be able to put a couple more racks together. Cue ball's close to that side. It's flicked the bump, and this is one of them shots where you should have been closer. I say it a lot. These are always a little bit thinner when you stood behind the cue ball. We we look at this and think it's not that thin, but from where Dimitri is, it is that little bit thinner. Extension, please. And this is the problem. He's building it up. He knows it's a big shot. He's looking at the potting angle. And there's a tightrope you walk here. You don't want to be too hasty on the shot, but don't be too hesitant either. What a big shot this is. And it's there, he's done well. Wants the cue ball to slow down. Otherwise he's going to put his partner under the gun now. He's done well there. He's done very well. He's decided to draw it across the face of the nine and play for the nine in the opposite corner. This nine ball to get to just one behind.
right to ten. Switzerland to break, trailing by five, racks to four. Brendan Moore, the referee, announcing the start of rack ten, and this could be the one that sees Switzerland in very unlikely fashion tied the scores. Golden break, four balls down, but what a time! He's absolutely crunching them. I'll tell you what, you know, if Ronald Regley continues to do this for the rest of the year, I want to be his bank manager. Wow! Five the last time he broke off, this time four, including the nine. Wow! I hate to break it to you, Phil, but Ronald Regley is a Swiss man. He does not need a bank manager. He is on the supply side of bank management. Look at that, the knob. Hungary must be thinking, what's happening? And it's happening so fast. Yeah, all because of that nine ball that almost missed. This is this is pool in a nutshell. This is why we love to watch it. We've got to be insane to play it. Do love watching it. Yeah, so basically a reprise here if you're just joining us. Hungary in relatively routine fashion led 5 1. Then Velmos Valdez missed quite a Rack 11. simple nine ball. Switzerland to break. Since Five then, Hungary have not had a, a single shot. It's been two break and run outs and then a, a golden break. 5 5. The ball is not got there, I don't think. Even if he can cut it in, I think he's going to lose the cue ball to the right side of the table. This is nasty. No, I don't think he can pop that. Fairly unusual push out, and what I mean by that is not often you see somebody rolling the ball out into the centre of the table, do you? Yeah. So. Okay. A little bit of mind games going on. What is this? I mean, you can put it anywhere you want on a push out. Why would they just essentially give them the same shot? Maybe even a little bit of an easier shot. Unless they're trying to psych them out. I almost said Wally. Carl knows what I'm going to say here. It's a, a game within a game, the push out. I could see what he was trying to do. He's got away with this one now. He was trying to miss the eight and get the two on the top rail. But at least they've not left the pot. But Dimitri can go rail first. And he's going to try and come off the left side of the blue two. Cue ball over towards the red three. And then the two on that right hand side rail. Got to be careful for the double kiss though.
nice little high five there by the Swiss. Really giving you a sense of how they're feeling about not only the game, but about each other right now. They're breaking like maniacs. They're hitting safety shots well. Extension, please. Ten minutes ago, Hungary was in this thing, and now it seems like they're playing from behind. Milmos does have a chance here. He could pop this two ball in that corner. He's going to go two rails off the bottom. Cue ball before the centre pocket. And then into the two. He's got a chance of potting this. Oh, it was close. But he's got to be happy with this. He hit it good. He's kept him alive. Whenever you're kicking at the ball, you just don't want to leave such an easy opener for your opponent. So they haven't done that. Precise of safeties that could have been locked up in behind the nine. Yeah, Oliver's just going to roll this two over to the left just to miss the purple five. He decided to play it harder. He decided to play it harder. The problem with that is. You've got to get the two down table. Been a bit fortunate where the cue ball and the pinks finished. That makes it awkward. Just uncomfortable queuing, wasn't it? And that was a prod. get to the potting angle. Oliver's got a good chance at this red three. That seven's kind of in his way. Sean Nocky showing signs of nerves. Yeah, you're right about the seven, though. It was just enough of a hindrance. It was sort of bending his back arm when he normally wouldn't. And I think that's definitely contributed to the, the three ball going astray. This is a good chance. Both teams have had visits in this rack, but now this is this is a road map. Who would have thought 20 minutes ago when Hungary were 5-1 up? Switzerland might be the first team on the hill. Do saying it's important that they keep Hungary off six. <laughs> and that's what's happened. It was 5-0 at the, their worst moment. The Swiss. They were masters of brinkmanship against Japan in round one. The victory here would be even more gratifying as he overdoes it for the seven. Yeah, he's got 
all of the top table that he can land the cue ball in. And he puts it there for Dimitri. He's still okay though, he can still cut this ball in. But this is what can happen. It can start to get away from you. All Ronald had to do was just pop that pop that ball and leave the cue ball anywhere up at the top of the table and they'd have won this rack. Because he over hit it, things have got funky. This is not easy. Oh, what a shot. What a shot he's playing here, by the way. Unrecognisable is the man who missed the nine ball in the first rack to kick off what was it, a poor opening to the match for Switzerland. But now the nine ball follows that terrific eight. And with it, Switzerland, unbelievably, go in front. It is 6-5, and of course they break off in rack 12. What a transformation, what a turnaround. Fighting spirit, but one has to say, Hungary have contributed to their own problems. I'm not going to say downfall yet, but it could well be. <laughs> Dimitri Jungo and Ronald Regley need one last effort, Carl. They must be feeling a million dollars. Yeah, they must be. To be 5-0 down in a race to seven, it happens now and again, but in such a big match like this, it's very rare, but they've done it. They've got themselves in the winning position. The breaking, unbelievable. So I can't wait to see what happens on this break shot. And it's the man who potted five and the nine the last time he broke to Thank break you. on the hill. Right, 12. Switzerland to break, leading six racks to five. Well, at least he's made one, that's all he cares about. And he's got a shot on the one. The horrible sound of the miscue. What are the consequences? They could be grave. Just when you think Switzerland is going to finish this one off, another twist in this game. Can Hungary capitalize? They've got to, but they've got to be so demoralized. They haven't won a game in the past six games. Two ball is a no pancake to get back on. Extension, please. I know they're usually called cupcakes, but I like pancakes more. Two ball doesn't pot in this corner, does it? Of I think it does, not really. Well, it can't do because. They're having too much a, a big of discussion. So they're trying to get down here. And they're going to play a safety shot. They're going to try and get this cue ball locked up. And if they can get it touching the three, that is going to make things hard. You got to get the safety pass there. Is that enough? Jittery, indecisive, looks nervy. 
Oh, needs the two to carry on. It's an easy hit. Now call our stats department, tell us that the next ball potted will be the 2,000th of the tournament. And it could also be the most important ball of this match. Is he trying to kick him behind it? Leave the cue ball up there for distance. He is. It's gone wrong. I think it's gone wrong. It can't have gone wrong. Because I think Dimitri was clicking his fingers. Yeah, he's kicking at this. Oh dear me, for Team Hungary, that could be the beginning of the end. Start the clock, please. Today has been a, a day of close matches. We didn't think this one was going to be this close, did we? For 2000 goes in. Rack seven for Switzerland in this match could be at hand. As commentators, we say, all you've got to do, all you've got to do is just hold yourself together. We make it sound so easy. It's so difficult because it means so much. A place in the quarterfinals against the USA beckons. Yeah, we went all over the first day without a match that didn't, it went past 7-4. Today, nothing has gone less than seven games to four. Couple of Hill Hill matches. All the contrasting feelings in both camps. Miles apart. Extension. Extension, please. Yeah, incredible. What an incredible match. You have to cash your mind back to the nine ball that Vilmos missed. It was to get them on the hill. Where's this cue ball? Where is this cue ball, by the way? Dimitri making things interesting for the fans. What has he played there? If Ronald is straight, I'm an he simply can't do anything other than roll the ball through. And as we've said, all along, the positional error usually you have to pop the difficult ball. He's actually done well getting in there. Dimitri's got to be delighted. Great shot. Pinched a bit of the pocket with left. This is very similar to the nine. Vilmos missed. But this one is for the match. Sean Noki can't look. And this is the pocket. This is the pocket that it cause so much angst for Hungary. Come on! Switzerland have climbed a mountain. Extraordinary, unbelievable, astounding.